Hello everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having a busy week. Um, we'll talk about that as we go, but I figured let's go ahead and do a mailbag. Um, what you can't see on my desk here is there is all kinds of stuff around here. I've got soldering stuff over here. I've got video capture stuff over here. I'm in the middle of uh, doing a Commodore 64 repair-a-thon here. I'm in the middle of doing a motherboard repair-a-thon over at the other one. I've got uh, video cameras strapped to my ceiling for an artificial intelligence project up there. Just all kinds of stuff. And this feels like a multi-package and maybe it's some stuff we need for some future projects. So let me get this out. All right, so we've got two of them. I'm going to be gentle because I can't exactly tell where the parts are. Uh, and this is, ah, oh, these are some capacitors. I feel like I ordered these a while ago. 40, oh, okay. You know, these are actually fairly recent. These are 47 picofarad. And I think these might be for, um, an Atari, uh, composite mod or something like that. But, uh, what I've been doing is as I've been running out of these, um, little ceramic capacitors here, uh, I've been ordering them in bigger quantities. Like I know I need uh, 100 and 103 also. Um, so I need to order those as well but uh just restocking over here so let's uh open up another one i'm guessing these might be related no oh okay what is this oh these are gonna be 21s aren't they these are um sn 74 ls 21 ends have they been rebadged they look suspiciously uh cleaned on the top so we're gonna we're gonna see if these things work um but yeah, these are for some ColecoVision cartridges that I'm doing. And for some reason, I didn't have any 21s. Um, maybe we should go ahead and just see if these things at least test positive. So I shot footage of me making this thing, but I don't know that I ever bothered to edit it into a video. This is the uh, retro chip tester. I'm going to set that back there. Um, as you can see, I just put it in this little case. And I have some adapter boards that travel with it sometimes. Uh, there's things you can test in here besides just normal chips. Um, but we'll go ahead and power it up. This thing is amazing. It probably cost me about 150 bucks or so to build, um, worth every penny. I still have the protective thing on here, so that's probably giving you guys a little bit of a glare. Let me shut this laptop. And there we go. I mean, that's decent enough. Um, so what you can do here is you go through the settings and we're going to find logic chips and let's see here logic chips hit okay uh say so yeah 7400 starting at zero so you can jump up to ones that are past 500 and then uh yeah let's we'll skip through here i think there's a faster way to to jump through but we have 7421s here and there we go these are four input and gates and so you put it over here little dot thingy that way yeah it popped up and hit okay and it's good. <laughs> so, I mean, that's it. We'll test another one. That was so quick. Uh, you know, depending on what you're doing, if you're doing a RAM chip, I mean, it could take minutes uh, to do. Is that the same one? Yep, same chip. So, we'll do another one. And put it in. And, yeah. Uh, again, depending on the type of chip, it can take minutes to test or split seconds to test. So uh, these types of things you could also test in an EEPROM programmer. And if I remember, I will go ahead and uh, link you to a good one for testing these kind of chips. But, uh, you know, I have this thing for doing some more sophisticated stuff. It does all kinds of RAM chips and, and other things. So anyway, that's the retro chip tester. And these are 74 LS21 quad AND gates. All right, next up no clue what this is ah these are um 62 pin it looks like these are 62 pin oh, man these, this stuff got here quick i did not order i might have ordered this like eight or nine days ago um from aliexpress uh but these are more commonly referred to as isa slots on a motherboard as i mentioned i'm in the middle of doing a motherboard repair-a-thon and I had a battery leak on an old motherboard. And uh, funny, Gadget Reboot just did a video called Not a Varda, where he made a Varda replacement. And, uh, you know, people talked crap about, you know, blaming the problem on Varda. But I've actually taken apart a couple of systems that were 
10 years older than the Varda batteries that leaked and had NICADs in them didn't leak. But anyway, long story short, a NICAD battery, NICAD battery killed the, uh, the slot on a motherboard and I've never actually replaced an entire slot on the motherboard, but I'm going to go ahead and give that a shot. And then beyond that, um, there are some projects and people making some modern day recreations of motherboards and stuff like that, where I might need some of these slots. So, uh, you know, they were, I think it cost me about 10 bucks maybe 15 bucks for 10 of these things. So not the cheapest thing in the world, but if it allows me to save a motherboard, then that's kind of awesome. So, uh, and if it doesn't, it's a fun experiment. So uh, I had a couple other things that I had to open right before um, filming this thing. So I'll go ahead and show you this. While I'm doing this, uh, shout out to all the wives that watch this channel. And that's not just a sexist remark saying that the only people who watch, the only women who watch my channel are wives. No, there's women who watch my channel uh, in their own right, but there's a whole nother category. Um, of wives uh who just watch these videos when their husbands are watching them and i've been told this like multiple times like hey you know we don't know what it is you're opening up or what you're doing and you explain it we still don't know but uh you know we just like watching it hey and you have nice hands and you know it's kind of fun to see who this person is <laughs> is watching the video so uh shout out to people like stephanie one and stephanie two and mariana and erica and you know <laughs> the, the wives who watch uh who suffer through these videos um, anyway, so this is an, an M27, uh, C1001. I don't remember what that is. I think it's like a, a 512 kilobyte EEPROM. So basically this is a chip that you can store information on almost like a disc. And, um, so I use this stuff in, I'm probably going to use this in like a Coleco, you know, a little arcade cartridge type thing. So I've got that. And then these are some resistors here, just uh, came in that same package. So again, not too fancy, but I uh, wanted to show you because I got it. All right, so we've got an Amazon one over here. And this is, ah, yeah. These are um, leveling feet. And so I am in the process of renovating my garage and turning a chunk of it into a laundry room. Floors in garages, especially ones that have laundry rooms, are often slanted toward the exit. Um, you know, so that if it floods that you wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't actually uh, flood toward the house. So um, I'm going to be putting the freezer, our chest freezer, in the corner of that laundry room. And so it's right where the floor really slopes pretty hard. So um, I have the floor or I have their freezer already sitting on a platform because I'm fairly tall and I hate bending over for stuff. So what I'm going to do is actually put these leveling feet on the bottom of that little base. And so if you've never used one of these like captive, it's, I don't think it's a captive nut. It's a star nut or whatever. But basically you drill a hole a little bit bigger than this thing or about the size of this thing. And then you pound this in and you can see it's got these like wicked little teeth on there that, um, you know, will hold it into the wood somewhat and it doesn't need to hold super well it just doesn't you don't want it to fall out when you pick it up um and then you can screw these feet in and raise and lower the whole thing and i think i got 10 or 12 of them with here uh what are these 10 would be an odd number but <laughs> i don't see a quantity on here uh well now i gotta know um so 2 10 12 all right 12 so we've got four sets of these feet i only needed four of them but i thought you know what i'm uh I'm gonna have this issue in other places in my garage, so I may want to level some things out. They do make these in various strengths and various heights and stuff like that, but this seemed, for my purposes, seemed like it would work. All right, so I can't really cover, I'm not gonna take the time to heat this up. Uh, no clue what this one is, but I think it's an AliExpress package. Um, so we're gonna open this one up, and this is, ah, these are um, trim pots. And so Gadget Reboot, I've mentioned him already, uh, recommended an Atari composite mod. So the old um, Ataris would hook up through like an antenna jack on the back and an RF signal. And um, if you do composite, like these little, I got one right here, these little yellow, red, and uh, white, you get a little bit better signal out of it and just easier to hook up to more modern devices. And so these are uh, five, zero to five um, K ohm 
potentiometers and he when he did his um he said that turning this didn't really make much of a difference but i've had somewhere i think that having one that's adjustable might make some difference so uh this is basically a resistor that i can put in my composite mod and tweak it just a little bit and see if it makes any difference because i have some old atarias that aren't taking uh to the composite mod very kindly so anyway i'll make a whole video about that um but those are the parts all right, next up, we've got something. Oh, okay, good. Whew. So um, I got one of these and then it didn't work. And so I'm hoping this one works. Uh, I have an industrial project that uses this screen in what they're doing. Now, something funny about these things, as I've learned about this screen, uh, see the green piece of tape here? Well, so they make this very similar board in a bunch of different versions. And uh, one of the things that's really funny is when you're actually um, setting it up in the Arduino or whatever, you'll see it'll say like green tab and black tab and red tab. What they mean is that you set it one way if yours came with a green tab on your you know your little peel off thing and you said a different way if it was a red tab and a different way if it was a black tab well i have no flipping way to know which ones you know the ones in the factory what they had on them uh so that's going to be fun i'm going to build this as a green tab and then i guess i'll build some options to change it if the ones in the factory were red tab or blue tab or black tab or whatever they are um but anyway this is a screen and so uh i do not like working with lcd screens it's just they've kind of been the bane of my existence so um I'm going to have to do some work on this to interface with the same UI that they have. Um, so I've got to duplicate that. And I'm not really looking forward to that, if I'm being honest. All right, I think I got two more. Maybe there might be some more around here, but I got two more for sure. This is, ah, okay, where's the, I feel like there's a companion. Oh, maybe it doesn't come in until tomorrow. Um, so this stuff is thermal. I'm not going to take it out of the package. This is thermal adhesive for um, heat sinks. And so I've got, and I probably won't make it into this video unless I just throw it in. Uh, I've got 60, I think, heat sinks coming. I, it was basically one of those things where I needed more than four or five, but you know, so I was in the wondering if I was gonna be buying a hundred of them or 50 of them or whatever. And it turned out that I could basically order 60 or 80 off Valley Express or get 60 off Amazon and get them here the next day. So because of my needs, I decided to get the ones, few less of them that I get here the next day. But this is the adhesive for putting little heat sinks on top of chips. So um, inside the Commodore 64s that I'm doing, they're known for kind of cooking their chips. So I'm gonna add a little heat sinks to them and uh, hopefully prolong the life of the computers that I just prolonged the life to. All right, this is the heavy one here. Um, let's see what we got. There might be multiple things in here. I don't really know. Um, but I have a feeling, judging by the weight, that I know at least one set of things are. Oh, no, just one. All right, these... Why bother? <laughs> look at this piece of garbage screwdriver. These are what look like maybe four inch, uh, maybe five inch, uh, urethane covered casters and you can see that i guess what is it no all four of them lock that's nice um so these are heavy duty casters with this nice urethane coating on them and uh, i think it's your thing oh that's cool the whole oh, that's a little weird see how it's like a little off center there you might be able to see it um that's really weird i never realized that this part didn't spin here um but anyway these things are uh what i used on my laser maybe i'll put a a picture up here but we have like a 300 dollar it's not 300 dollar 300 pound uh 20 by 28 laser cutter and i decided that what i wanted was one that didn't have a giant base on it because i wanted to get it way in the back through a small set of doors and it was very heavy and very difficult to move but once i got it in there i wanted to build it on a big platform so what i did was i built a platform for the laser that had wood storage on the bottom and i wound up putting these uh, wheels there so that i could move it around which has been super handy and so what i've decided is i think I'm going to build a cart for my um, my uh, compound sliding miter saw that will be the same height as my workbench. And so the thought is that as I redo my garage, I mean, 99 times out of 100, if I have the 
uh, the miter saw in the middle of the room or a little bit to one side, I'll be able to cut whatever I want, kind of whatever I want. But occasionally I might have something really awkward that's hard to cut on there. And so what I want to be able to do is to pull the entire miter saw out, cart and all, and do some cutting out there. And so I decided that I was going to buy some quality wheels. And having used the other ones for a couple of years, these are quality wheels. And uh, one of the things, you know, a lot of things you'll find in repurposed casters and they'll have like just a post in the center. And then you have to design your whole thing around that post in the center. Um, I really, really like these ones that use four, uh, you know, have four holes. The holes clear the, you know, clear the side of the thing. These are just the best ones, in my opinion, to attach to something. I hate when you have to try to get something exactly like with a post up the middle or there's three of them and you barely can get in there with the drill. This is the way you want it. You want ones that these platforms are rectangular. Um, the drill or whatever you use, the bolts will clear um, the side of the wheel itself just it makes your life easier. It, it is funny that they came with some tools. It's kind of nice uh, They came with some tools that came with some uh, look like maybe number 12 screws if you uh, Americans are using anything with the metric system uh, number 12 screws if you want to screw them in it came with some bolts if you want to bolt them in which I think is nice um, You know we got options here and these things were 30 bucks. So they're not the cheapest wheels uh, but they are they are quality unlike the screwdriver like i don't understand who is putting these wheels on something that doesn't have a screwdriver and this is a like this is like a number one and a half screwdriver and these have to be number two screws i mean i guess yeah that is that is not really the right size screwdriver it fits but it's not really the right size screwdriver for these things but um again I've used the wheels, I like the wheels, I recommend the wheels, so I bought more of the wheels. Next up, I almost missed this one. It was uh, it was in my pocket. Um, I'm guessing this is not gonna be anything too exciting, but we're gonna open it up anyway. This is, ah, tantalum capacitors. Uh, these are, they're chunkier than I was expecting. These are 25 volt, 47 microfarad, and 25 volt, 47 microfarad. So basically what I did is I went through, um, the motherboards that I was going to be working on and just check to see if there were any tantalums that I didn't have. And this is a common one that I didn't have. Um, again, that's really chunky compared to what I would be pulling out. But uh, anyway, so I got a couple of these tantalum capacitors. These things aren't cheap. I mean, this is, you know, this isn't bad here, but I, you know, you can, you can buy thousands and thousands of these ceramics uh, for under 10 bucks. Uh, and I've been looking for like a good multi-pack, which if anybody has your recommendations, look for a good multi-pack of um, tantalum capacitors and just never find them. So keep an eye out. One day my ship will come in and I'll have a good full selection of tantalums. But until then, I have to buy them as I need them or as I think I might need them. That, as I look around, is all I got. So I hope you are having a fantastic day. Um, I'm about to enjoy my weekend. Going to go to a spring training baseball game and then uh, get back to work in the garage. So, hey, have a great day. Thanks for watching.